All right, we will call to order the regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Monday, March 20th, 2023. Uh, I would ask that you please rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, we ask for just a uh, special blessing on several different people. Uh, one is Alderman Wolf, who was uh, uh, taken this afternoon to the hospital by our fire department, and he's, uh, I'm told, resting peacefully. So we would just ask that a special blessing be showered upon him and that he make his usual quick recovery from whatever's got him down. Tonight, also, we want to remember Greg Bradley, who worked for the city of Batavia for a number of years as a member of the Batavia Fire Department. And uh, Greg passed away this past weekend down in Fort uh, near Tice, Florida, in the southern end of the state. Uh, he had been injured in an accident in the, during the fire service and had been in, confined to a wheelchair for a number of years. But uh, he at one time was the starting quarterback of the Batavia High School football team and is fondly remembered by many people in Batavia for his never-ending Batavia spirit of enthusiasm and we just ask that a special blessing be showered upon him and his family as they go about this difficult time following his passing this past weekend. Uh, tonight, as always, we want to uh, ask for understanding and direction and guidance by the members of the City Council as they go about the matters being brought before him. And we also ask that a special blessing this evening be showered upon all those men and women from our community and from out our country who are serving on foreign soil in defense of the liberties of the United States of America as members of the U.S. military. And also, if we ask tonight for guidance and direction to the members of the City Council as they act on the items before us. Uh, we ask for all these blessings. Amen. Uh, Paul you want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, visible with liberty and justice for all. I ask the City Clerk to please call the roll. Miller? Here. Rosado? Here. Beck? Here. Connolly? Here. Chanzet? Wolf, Solfa, here. Baron, here. Lehman, here. Ayazi, here. Malay, here. Ewer, here. Sarone, here. Vogelsinger, here. 14, uh, 13 to 14 present, Your Honor. Very good. So we have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Uh, moving then to item number four, which is our agenda reminder that if you're going to speak to us tonight, we ask that you please use the microphone at the podium, given the fact that this is going to be recorded and replayed on BATV. And so if we don't ask you to re uh, speak clearly into the microphone, many times we've had people complain they couldn't hear what was being said. So moving then to item number five, items to be removed, added, or changed on tonight's agenda. Do we have anything? Yes, Your Honor, we would like to add an executive session for collective bargaining. Anybody have anything else? So do we want a motion now to amend the agenda? Yes. So I'd ask for a motion for addition to the agenda for the discussion and executive session of collective bargaining. So moved. Move by Alderman Sofa, second by Alderman Lehman. Any further discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Solfa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Sarone? Aye. Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Connolly? Aye. Chanzet? Aye. 13 yes, no, no, one absent. Motion approved. All right. Anybody else have any items they want removed, added, or changed? 
Okay, moving then to the consent agenda and normally Alderman Chance. Alderman Chance, did you ever come on the meeting? Yeah, President. Can you uh, give us the consent agenda for tonight, please? Indeed. Just to clarify, do you have any lag in my voice or is it coming through just fine? Your voice is coming through just fine. Okay. Your um, Honor, the consent agenda reads as follows. Uh, building reports for February 2023. Uh, approvals the March 17th, 2023 payroll in the amount of $957,691.02. Because payable check register in the amount of $4,357,185.44. City Council minutes for March 6th, 2023. 2022 uh, budget transfers and reconciliation. Approval, Cal Executive Session Minutes, November 1st, November 15th, 2022, um, December 13th, 2022, as well as February 28th, 2023. Resolution 23-45-R, approval of the 2023 zoning map. Uh, resolution 23-44-R, supporting tax increment financing. Approval of Class J liquor license application for Imagine Batavia LLC doing business as Imagine Batavia, 550 North Randall uh, Road in Batavia. Resolution 23-47-R, approval of tax order number 19 with Trotter and Associates. That's for uh, construction engineering services for the uh, Phase 2A wastewater treatment uh, plant facility improvement. Resolution 23 Dash 48 dash R declaring certain uh, personal property to be a surplus and authorizing donation of property. Uh, resolution 23 dash uh, 46 dash R first responder drones. Resolution 23 dash 49 dash R LMI leadership training. Uh, Your Honor, we move that we approve the consent agenda as follows. Second. Move by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Sofa for the approval of the consent agenda as follows, as approved, as presented. Uh, any comments, questions from anybody? For the record, I just wanted to mention uh, item N, which is resolution 23-048, uh, declaring certain personal property to be set a surplus and authorizing donation of property. What this is, is this is our 19... 96 Seagrave bumper tanker fire truck, which we are going to, I guess, initially loan to the Caneville Fire Department. And they are they just experienced a very bad accident, which their first run engine got in a bad accident and was totaled out. So they're in need of a good piece of equipment. This one was used primarily by us for all those years for carrying water into the fire district. And then when Caneville gets their new engine, this truck will then be moved over to the Caneland High School fire service uh, class that they have out there. This will be the second vehicle that we've donated to Caneland. And uh, we've gotten some good firemen on our paid and call force and later on our paid department out of that program. So it's been a, a very strong program for our school system and for the community to benefit from. So. I just am very proud of the fact that we're able to make this donation because we're holding together a very key component for Batavia's future with what we're doing here. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Any other comments from anybody? Kirk, call the roll then on the presentation and approval of the consent agenda. Chance it. Aye. Bolfa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Connolly? Aye. 13 yes, no, no, one absent. Which is approved. All right, next is items from the public, matters from the public for items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody this evening? All right, then we will move to item number eight, which is going to be a presentation by the Batavia Public School District 101 administration, reference the referendum that will be on the ballot for Batavia voters on April 4th. And we have, we're honored tonight to have Lisa Hitchens, the superintendent of the Batavia school system here to make this presentation, I think, you're, what you're doing. Yeah, 
Thank you, that honor is mine though, thanks. Um, yes, my name is Lisa Hitchens and I'm here to talk briefly about the school district referendum. And the reason that I'm here talking to the city council is because this is a topic that really does matter to everyone in the community. Um, just a little background of why I'm back because you were very generous with your time in the past and I came to talk to you before the November vote and I'm back again, so why am I back again? Um, the, in November, the about 14,000 people turned out to vote and the, there was a difference, um, 24 um, people, more people voted no than voted yes in November, so on our referendum question at the time. So we engaged uh, the community in a survey, we did some focus groups, we talked to a lot of people, a lot of people had some advice for us, and one of the things we said is should we put the question back on the ballot? And um, based on our community engagement and that survey, um, the board did decide to put that question back on the ballot. And the reason was during all these conversations, people were saying, we didn't know about the plan. A lot of people didn't even answer the question on the ballot. Um, people were telling us the community wasn't talking about it. We had fewer than 200 hits on our referendum page on our website. And so we thought we needed to have a new uh, communication plan because people needed to understand how it matters to them and what it meant for each of our buildings in the district. So um, I do have Holly Beachman here tonight as our communication manager. She's wonderful, but it, we just needed to change our strategy a little bit. We felt like we um, reached out in every way we knew how, but we've done some things differently and I think it's made a difference. So if you look at our website, it's order, organized a little bit differently. There's a one pager for every school about what will happen um, in a lot of FAQs. And so what is this referendum question? Well, it's the same one from November and the board will issue debt up to the amount of $140 million. And the amount is actually, we're not exactly sure how much we could issue, how much debt we could issue because the promise of the board is that we will just maintain that tax payment that we have right now that we put towards the bond and interest tax um, payment that we have to make, the bond and interest payment. So that is $9.1 million every year where we're paying off prior debt and that is about to go off the books and so the promise is that we will just continue with that payment. If the public votes no, then their taxes would go down by that amount. Um, all of the schools would be impacted by, if the referendum passes, there will be projects at every school and two schools, H.C. Storm and Louise White, would be rebuilt completely. Um, a lot of people have been asking me why the board put the same exact question on since it didn't pass. And the, the reason, I, I was at the track meet at our high school, at our indoor track the other day, and I was watching um, relay races and passing of the batons, and I have to think back to 2017, when we first started talking about the facilities. We had a committee that we put together. They passed off that baton to another um, facil facilities team that we called a core team. We brought in experts to help us analyze all our buildings. And this core team of people, citizens, staff, we identified about $300 million worth of projects. And then we took that baton and we handed it off to a citizen group. And what they did is they they did um, they got community the community engaged. They gave a survey and they gave people options. Do you want to fund all of this? Your taxes will go up. Do you want option B, which would be we'll just maintain the current tax payment that we make towards the bond and interest tax levy, or do we do nothing? And overwhelmingly, people picked that option B. It was like a, a nice compromise. We from that handoff to that facilitating team, they took that information, they went to the board and they handed it off and they said option B is what people want and that's what the board put on the ballot. So in November, um, we had a very short window when it didn't pass to turn around and decide if we were putting it on the ballot again on April 4th. And so there wouldn't be time to help to go recreate that whole process where we got community engagement and came up with a new plan. And the board really did feel like they had done their job in getting the um, community engaged in the decision making along the way. So that's why they put the same question back on, um, but asked us to communicate it differently. Um, 
And so w one of the things, this is the last thing I'll, I'll say is that as I've been going and just like I did last time, but meet with um, everyone in the community, I do feel like we have everybody's attention. And whenever I go do a presentation, we've done some different groups. Um, there are five questions that come up almost every time. So I'm going to do them real quickly. I'm not going to give you the, the 10 minute answer. I'm going to give you like the 12 second answer because these are all also on our website. We have like a one pager for all of these FAQs and other topics that people are talking about. Um, the first is, you know, how can we trust the district? We said you put it to the community in 2014, whether or not we should put in turf and the community said no and you did it anyway. So that is one of the um, things that comes up every time we speak. And most people are saying, tell me the story because I'm not sure it's exactly as it's being portrayed. And the answer is we did put a referendum question on the ballot in 2014 because we had deferred some maintenance. We asked the public um, if we could issue $15 million worth of debt to tackle a whole host of projects that have been backlogs because we were coming out of a financial situation and we were needing to address these projects. So the board put it on the ballot. Can we borrow $15 million? The community said no, and the board did not borrow any money. They have not borrowed any money since the prior referendum, which we're almost done paying off. So we didn't, the board did listen to the community. They did not issue any debt. Um, that doesn't mean we didn't tackle all of those projects that were on that list or as many as we could um, tackle. And one of them happened to be turf, and that's when the booster stepped in and said that we'll give you half a million dollars if, um, to help you to cross that item off your list. So they helped, the, they partnered with the district, and that was one of the projects we were able to get done. Um, the second thing that keeps coming up is how did your buildings get in such disrepair, which is really hard because we are saying our buildings are in such a shape that we have to tear them down and rebuild two of them anyway. And I would say that um, we do spend over $2 million annually to upkeep our facilities, but they're highly used and um, they these projects just um, compound. If you want to um, touch any of the roof, then we have to bring it up to modern codes. And then we might also identify some HVAC projects in the meantime while we're touching the roof. And so these things add up. And we really do need a master plan. So for the past seven years, we've kind of been on pause with some of these bigger projects waiting for this master plan. Um, and that's unfortunately in the state of Illinois, big, big projects are funded through building bonds, which get you know, that is what the taxpayers uh, pay. That's how almost every district in Illinois pays for their big projects. And so that is what we're asking the community to do is to help us knock off some of these big, very large projects so that we can continue every year to spend that $2 million, $2.5 million out of our operating budget to keep up our facilities. So knock out some of the bigger projects. Um, the third thing, enrollment's going down. So why don't we just close the school? Um, enrollment at elementary has really stabilized. We do have smaller classes that have made their way through. So middle school is just about stabilized. The high school's going to spend another year or two with declining enrollment, but we're not closing the high school. Um, and then the six elementary schools, if we closed one of them today, we would be over capacity at the other five if we spread those kids out around the district. Um, what are the tax implications? We have a tax calculator that Holly put on the website, so you can go in and put your property value in, and you'll figure out what this um, referendum means to you. And then finally, what are the student, where, where do we put the students during construction? Um, for the most part, we'll try to keep every student as with the least disrupt, disruption in their normal classrooms. Um, for the two new schools, we would try, we would build them adjacent to the existing schools. So the students would continue to attend school at Louise White and at HC Storm while a new school was being constructed um, in the in the lot. So when, when that building was open, it would be open, then the students would just uh, move over to the new building. And um, finally, I would just say thank you for this opportunity. And it's real important that because this is an election that doesn't normally get a lot of um, voters out, a very uh, 
relatively low percentage of voters show up, I, I would ask that everybody um, who is talking about the referendum and um, show, out, show up to vote. And people that haven't been talking about the referendum, feel free to contact us. There's a many different ways you can call us. We have people stop in um, to ask us questions. And please do not hesitate to call us to get any information um, or clear up any information that you're um, that you're hearing out in the community because it really does impact all of us. And we hope that you chime in on April 4th. So again, thank you for your time. And I really appreciate your partnership and look forward to great spring here in Batavia. Anybody have any questions for the superintendent? Alderman I, I, Somebody reached out to me uh, with this question. Right. Referendums, you can just keep bringing the same. Yep, yes. And when you look back, there's a page on our website of referendum over, referenda questions over time, referendum questions over time. And you'll see in our history since um, 1956, we've had a history of um, passing referendum. And there was, this is the longest we've gone without passing one, but there was a time when we built HC Storm that we put it on a ballot, the school district back in the day, and the voters said no. And then, then the district came back with two schools. So that's when we got um, actually HC uh, Storm and Louise White were built when we, the voters said no, and they said, come back with a different plan. The district did, and they actually brought, they asked for more money. And that one passed. Yeah. Yeah, I could have come back and asked for more money. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if that would have worked, but if this one doesn't pass, we'll think about it. Yeah. Other questions? I, I just would oh, like to make a Mayor, couple. one quick question. So if I'm understanding correctly, if the referendum passes, the current tax, the school tax, won't change. It, it'll, it'll stay the same. Correct. So the bond and interest payment that we make, so you pay this much in taxes, and about 10% of that is bond and interest. So yeah, that part will not change. It will not go up. Now your operating taxes in general go up, usually by um, CPI every year, yeah. um, but we are capped at a certain amount that we could ask for. So I can't promise you that your whole overall bill won't go up, but right. that part won't. Right, but that part would change anyway, regardless of the referendum, possibly the CPI. Right, so, it, even, so if, if the voters say no, that part will come off as the bonds are paid off in the next few years here, and then eventually the taxes do go back up. Thank you. Well, um, All good. The, the time since the last referendum and now, costs have gone up. or how do you plan on making up for that loss? Yeah, there, there's a, there is a question or, or a one-page document on our website answering that very thing. That's a great question. And um, yeah, it's called, it's a moving target because we don't know what the interest rates will be and we don't know what the construction costs will be five years from now or whenever we're able to complete these projects. Um, and so that is why you won't see, we're gonna do exactly <laughs> projects one, two, three, four, five, six at this school. Um, we do know that we would need to tackle those first to the HC Storm and Louise White, we would definitely build because it is part of the question, but the rest of it, um, it would depend on the construction costs and the interest rates, what we're able to borrow. Um, and then we, you don't see construction drawings right now for that very reason, we would be, um, we, we don't, we can't predict exactly how much we're gonna be able to spend. So we have approximate expenditures per school, but that could go up or down depending on the market at the time. Anybody else? I would just like to make a couple of observations. Uh, I've had people ask me, do we really need these schools? Are we ever gonna have any more additional kids? Well, I, I would respond to that by noting that at, the, at this moment, the city of Batavia is sitting here and we've just issued the final sele selection of building permits for, wine, uh, for uh, Batavia Commons out on Kirk Road at Wind Energy. And when those are all built, there'll be 242 attached condominium units out there. 
And then in the front of that, if you go out on Kirk Road, you can certainly see this. There's a six, I believe it's a 16 acre area that has been zoned for business use. And now nothing's shown up there yet, but there, so there should be some more tax generation off of that with no further students. But and then on the west side, we are now building uh, Winding Creek over off of McKee Street. And that is 163 single family home units. So between uh, Batavia Commons and Winding Creek, uh, the Batavia School District can look forward in the, probably the next two or three years to 405 new living units in the community. So I would assume that this will fill your classrooms or it, it certainly will provide some significant additional assessed valuation that can be applied to your roles and hopefully leverage to keep the property taxes in a manageable state because you if you pass this referendum you're you're promising to keep things as e even but you're going to have some positive things come in here with 404 new living units and then if you throw on top of that the landings which won't have any kids but that's 440 new living units and that's all on the tax rolls so the the school district's boundaries and everything else kind of come into play there a little bit because you've got the, the Geneva School District and the Aurora School District. Uh, Batavia extends themselves into those districts and they extend into Batavia when it comes to Geneva over there on the north side. But, uh, you know, I think there's a, there's a real energy or synergy here for new home, new people wanting to move in. So the days that the Batavia School District Nobody should be making the argument, well, they're not going to grow anymore because we got the stuff being built right now. And I just think that's something that everybody should be aware of. I would hope the district in the future would manage its finances so that we can use some of that growth to kind of protect the, the current EAVs and keep the taxes where truly they are so that we don't have it because you you are going to have some some nice growth coming in. and. Uh, we, uh, we're very fortunate right now in Batavia to have all the things we've got going for us. And uh, the other wild card in the room in, is the Batavia School District is going to be the home of a gambling casino here before it's all over with. But as I understand it, with the, for the city of Aurora, there's a deal been made that Batavia is going to, like we did with the outlet mall, uh, we're going to let them use the TIF district down there or something for a few years. But at the end of that TIF district, as I think we found out with the outlet mall, Batavia School District got a nice slice of cash off, the deal, which we do now, I think, from the outlet mall, if I'm correct. Yep. Yes, so, that's uh, true. So Batavia's, and uh, I, I need not go very far into the city of Aurora before or I get my ears burned by people I know there about what the city of Aurora has done to them, but they're allowing all this growth to take place, positive growth, they call it, taking place in the Batavia School District. So uh, we've got some shining stars hanging in the sky on us. And so I just wanted everybody to, as a community, understand what that's all about. That context, thank you. Any other questions of the superintendent? I guess not. I, as long as you're standing there, I just want to publicly express to you my admiration and appreciation for your leadership with the school district. For how many years have you been our superintendent? Ten. Ten. And she has announced she is retiring. She's already had her successor approved and appointed. And you will be leaving at the end of this school year? That's correct. At the end of June. Yep. The end of June. All right. Well, I just on, on behalf of the community want to thank you for your diligence and your careful management and your overwatch of what we've done here because you leave the school district in pretty good shape, a very good shape. And I would just wanted to publicly, somebody should say something nice about what you've done because you have done, a, you have done a very nice job. So thank you for one person saying something nice. Yeah. I'm kidding. Everybody's been very kind. It's been my pleasure. That's good. This but has I, been you know, I, publicly there, are, you don't get many of these that's very nice. Somebody says, oh, boy, you really did a nice job. Well, you did. So well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we I guess we have a number nine is the Main Street report.
Hi, thanks so much for having me today. Um, and thanks again for supporting Restaurant Madness. We will we'll, we'll be collecting the stats from the videos that were released and posted, um, and I'll have those numbers to you soon. Um, we have Egg Hop coming up on April 8th, and that's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in downtown Batavia. We have 45 businesses that will be participating so kids can go around and collect eggs from the different businesses. And that's from 10 to 2, I'm sorry, 10 to 12. Um, and those eggs, there will be, um, each business gets five, we call them golden tickets, um, but basically kids can take those to downtown uh, to Peg Bond Center and enter to win raffles from prizes, from gift baskets comprised of donated items from different businesses, so that's going on. And we'll have a whole host of other events going on at Peg Bond, as well as in Appleton Park, the Congregational Church will be hosting a three and under egg, hop, egg hunt. So anyways, that is at April 8th. And then we have selected the 2023 Boardwalk Shop tenants. There'll be um, eight shops coming in, per I'm sorry, nine shops coming in permanently, and then one will serve as a pop-up shop. Um, we're really excited about those tenants. Um, opening weekend is May 12th. And if you wanna see a full list of who will be there, um, you can visit our website at downtownbatavia.com. Um, the farmer's market moves back to River Street on May 20th. We're excited for another season. We've had, we're moved it up one weekend, which allowed us to have our artisan collective, which is on the third Saturday of the month. At an additional date, our artisan collective is um, a group of artisans who must make at least 70% of the items that they sell. And we had over 110 applications this year, so it's really a booming market, and we're looking forward to that. Um, in the meantime, visit the indoor market at uh, the dock at 151st Street. And that's all I have today. Any questions? Questions on Batavia Main Street. Thank right. you. Keep Thank up you. the great job. Thanks. So our agenda doesn't call for any committee reports tonight. I, I'm assuming we didn't feel we had any? No. Okay. So then it's the administrator's report. Laura? Thank you. I uh, just wanted to say we are expecting the results of our community survey imminently. So I look forward to giving a pre presentation on those results. And I'd like to thank the uh, 1,000 folks in our community who took the time to respond to that survey. The information that we glean from that is uh, critical to our uh, doing the update of our strategic plan, which we'll move into here uh, this summer. We are continuing to field questions about our referendum questions, which are on the ballot. And uh, Lori Botterman, our communications manager, has put together a nice FAQ of information um, to assist people with evaluating um, those questions. We also have fielded some additional questions that we've used to update those. You can find those on the city's website and also on our uh, social media platforms. Um, the engineering department and our contractor, H.R. Green, met on site with the six residents uh, whose homes are adjacent to the Mahoney Creek uh, Detention Basin Project. And then our consultant is going to put together a report of um, what the concerns were and uh, potential solutions there. So that'll be coming back in a, a few weeks. Um, as news of the EPA's new standards regarding PFAS were announced this past week, um, we put information out there for our community regarding some advanced testing that we had done in anticipation of those um, standards and testing requirements being released. And we've got a whole page of information on our website about that if people are interested in learning more. 
I um, also like to uh, encourage people not to over-purchase garbage stickers at this point. Um, we have, this is the end of the five-year term in 90 days uh, coming up here. So, uh, you know, whether we decide to, we might decide to go with a different company or if we decide not to have a sticker program and only have a toter program, we just want to warn people in advance to kind of at this point, just by the stickers that you need. Um, and then also some uh, great things that are going on at the Batavia Police Department. They are participating in the Kane No Refusal DUI abatement initiative on Friday, March 17th, and it was spearheaded by the Kane County State's Attorney's Office and assist law enforcement in efforts to obtain search warrants for individuals who've refused to submit to chemical testing after a DUI arrest. And uh, more information about that program can be found on the Kane County State's Attorney's Facebook page. We have also recently ordered two new digital um, speed display signs. We have found that it is uh, can be very effective in areas where it's been reported that people are exceeding the speed limit to post those digital display signs. And we see behaviors uh, change just from having posted those signs. So um, as we receive additional display units, the goal will be to target um, areas around public and private schools as well, because we are uh, concerned with uh, people speeding in those areas. And we expect to have the first units displayed by mid to late May. Um, this Thursday, March 23rd, is the first Coffee with a Cop. We'll be at Starbucks on Randall Road from 10 to noon and 4 to 6 p.m. The next Coffee with a Cop will be somewhere here in the downtown uh, business district sometime in late spring or early summer. And then also in cooperation with State's Attorney uh, Jamie Mosser, the King County State's Attorney's Office, Batavia PD, will be hosting a presentation on elder fraud scams. Um, the event will be held on Wednesday, April 12th from 10 o'clock a.m. until noon at the Homestead at 700 West Fabian Parkway. The event is open to the public and Batavia Police Department will be extending invitations to all of the other uh, senior living center residents in Batavia to uh, join us for this informative um, seminar. And that's all I have unless anybody has any questions for me. Questions? Right. Do we have other business? A question or a request, I guess. I'm sure it's already happening, Laura, but I know April 5th there's a, the discussion on River Street. Yes. Can we have a, the following meeting, something on the agenda for us to discuss what happened there and the yes. results? So it will be uh, information gathering and, and sharing about uh, what the construction will look like and then to get the adjacent business owner and uh, property owner's ideas about where to uh, place that, I'll call it outdoor furniture, um, that is the planters and the benches and things like that. Okay. And yes, then the discussion will come back so that we can um, kind of show you a diagram of what that will look like. Thank you. Are comments or questions from anybody? All right, uh, going to the mayor's report. Uh, I just want to make a couple of observations. Uh, one of the things you probably may have noticed or seen is we have a lot of small buses now running around town. And most of those are from the call and ride or the dial a bus program that Pace Bus has. And what basically is occurring is, is that now that we have six senior living communities within the borders of Batavia, and we have some of them that are big, big, big time customers of the, riding the bus. And so now it's very common for these senior living communities to get together and have breakfast and then 10, 12 say, gee, I need to go to Target or I need to go to Walmart. And then there's 10 others that say, yeah, I'd like to come along. I need a few stuff. So now the problem that we're having sometimes in the bus is we'll get there and they got more riders and we got seats on the bus. So then Pace has been real accommodating and getting 
Ubers or other people over to get everybody picked up and get them go. I just share that because the ridership on the on the bus is really gone heavy duty, but it's at the smaller bus. It's not the big bus. If you look at the bus that runs up and down Route 31 from basically it goes from Aurora to Elgin and it comes up to Batavia on 31 and then it goes out to Randall Road and goes up to Elgin that way. Uh, we don't have many riders on that. I, and that for whatever reason, that's not a program that a lot of people seem to have an interest in. But boy, we do have a lot of people wanting to ride the call and ride and the dial ride bus because it gets you where you want to go and it comes back and picks up. The one dilemma that they are facing is, is that we have people that call it and say, well, gee, I need to have you take me to my doctor's appointment tomorrow. And most of the time we can willingly do this. But we now have some of these new people who have just moved into some of our new senior living communities, and they say, well, my doctor's in Rockford, or my doc doctor's in Kankakee, or wherever it is. Well, number one, they can't take the bus outside the RTA service area and go into Rockford or Kankakee. So then there's some of these folks get pretty upset that they can't get a bus, and we, at the end of the day, we have to you know, switch them off to Uber, and many times then they can get a ride. It's probably a little bit more costly than what the bus would have been. But we got to keep the buses in the RTA service area because that's who's basically paying for the buses to be there. And we do have this RTA sales tax that all of us pay on everything you do in Kane, DuPage, Will, McHenry, Lake, and Cook Counties. And that generates a lot of money, which is good, but it also allows for the buses to ride. So the western suburbs has collectively experienced a major increase in bus riding thanks to the, the, the small buses. And probably the case in point is, I think you've, I told about this before, but up in my office I got this plaque that was given to us by Kane County thanking us for sharing in the creation of the uh, vaccine location, the shot lo or the yeah the shot location for the COVID, in which they shot 114,600 people with vaccine out at the old Sam's Club, and it was the largest number of people in the area to get vaccinated at one spot, other than some place in Chicago. We were the leading one in the suburbs for vaccine and. It's interesting, a number of people from quite a distance away have told me that I came to Batavia and got my vaccine from uh, because it was such a nice, convenient location for that to happen. So uh, we do have some positive things happening in town, uh, and I'm just very, very pleased that we've got it all. So I guess that's the end of my report. We now need a motion to go into executive session for the discussion of collective bargaining. Do we need, we need a motion? We need a motion, yes. Somebody care to make so a motion? Moved. Move, second. Moved by Alderman Sofa, second by Alderman Millay, uh, that we enter executive session. The court call the roll. Sofa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Aye, Ozzie? Aye. Millay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. Vocal Singer? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Alderman Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Connolly? Aye. Chancet? Aye. 13, uh, yes, no, no, one absent. All right, we'll take a brief recess and then we'll come.